All right, the pen tool is, is, keeps filling the path for me, but the reason I hooked into the jaw here is I actually need to outline around it because I want that line or, or go around it. I want that line to still show up. And so with that path connected, I'm going to continue with the pen tool here. And continue on with it. Not worrying if it looks really weird at the moment. It's got the elements I need to adjust later. And if you've ever used AutoCAD or other kind of computer assisted design programs, this has a lot more in common with plotting than it does with um, drawing. So it can feel like a very foreign experience. I know it does often for me. There's always a lot to be, to be learned as well. Ah, so you see how that, that jaw shape's now going to kind of work. And you can make your adjustments as you go by holding down Command, using that small selection tool, holding down Spacebar to kind of move around. option will convert your anchor points if you want them to go from curves to straight but more often than not what you need to do is just hold down command and move one of those bezier handles all the way in to convert it that's how you get some of these so if I want this to be one curve instead of two curves You basically just move your bezier handles in a little bit or sometimes let's see you just delete that anchor point entirely because you don't need it and if you use your curves in the right way you can get it without and you want to use as few anchor points as possible an example where I need to get rid of one handle. Oops. What's going on there? And remember with your small selection tool you can move individual anchor points around as well. And if you do something you don't like, you always just hit Command-Z. Hmm. So I think I want to get rid of that anchor. See if I can make that all one smooth curve using this handle. These are fairly complicated shapes. It looks like I will need to add an anchor point just because that swoop is there. So to add one, you, you go under your pin options, you can add an anchor point on the path. And that will give you new toys to play with. So in my, in this instance, new handles that I can manipulate. 
and a new anchor point to place. So I've kind of lost, lost my sketch a little bit, need to get it back. There we go. Because the curves are there, even if they're really subtle. Shifting from side to side. pretty close here. Oops. Again, you have to be really precise where you click. Okay, let's close this shape up and then I'll, I'll play with it some more. So I have it selected. I'm still on the pin tool. Oh, I'm on the wrong tool here. Sorry. And now I want to clean up this path. So to do that, to extend an existing path, you hold down shift that you've kind of broken the chain on. You can hold down shift while you're doing it. You gotta select the path first. Ah, work for me here. Sometimes Illustrator behaves in ways that just baffle me. frustrating. So you'll see why I often go back to the pencil tool. So let's look and see what we have so far. I have to finish the path of that ear. But I'll show you how you can do that with the pencil tool as well. Since the pen tool isn't quite operating the way I want it to. But it is getting there. The heart and soul of my design is there. So now I'm going to use the pencil tool, hold down command, select this shape, which isn't contained yet, and I'm going to contain it. So I'm going to continue it along the path, contain it up through the year until I get that circle and complete it that way. And with this shape, select that, continue this and hook it into an overlapping it, and round out this curve and point a little bit. And it created a new path for me, which I do not want. Let me start small, make sure I'm redrawing the existing path. Good. And then branch out a little bit bigger. Ah, overshot that a little bit. And so I want you to try both the pen tool and the pencil tool, but then you can kind of decide which better suits your approach. 
Now here I have two overlapping paths. And that's why we're doing it with black and white to begin with. Because I can get that, that undercut there to work really beautifully. Even though there's two separate paths that are creating it. Now what if I want to merge those two separate paths together into one path? One shape. Is such an outlandish thing possible? Yes, indeed it is. So here's the next kind of tool we'll use a lot of in Illustrator. I'm going to select both paths using the small selection tool, holding down shift, so they're both simultaneously selected. You can see that here. Then I'm going to use what's called the Pathfinder tool, which you can find under Window, Pathfinder, but it's also right here in the default toolbar. Nope, that's the wrong one. Sorry, down here, Pathfinder tool. <laughs> now what this allows is when you have multiple paths, paths selected, it will join them together. And so I'm creating a compound shape uniting these two so they don't have this area of overlap. Let's see what that does. Voila! Makes it one combined path. One clear cutout. So now this is all one fill. And if I wanted it, I couldn't do it otherwise if they were two separates. Now if I wanted to, I could select this path and turn it all into an outline and it will all work. All right. Once you've done something complicated like that, make sure you save your work. Just by hitting Command S. And now instead of tracing this twice, I just need to trace it correctly once and then I can make a duplicate of those paths and flip them on their axis, just like I was doing in Photoshop. But I kind of have to decide how do I want that to work. And I think what I'll do is just use the pencil and kind of rough this in first. I have the pencil set on about halfway smooth. So I'll lose a little bit of accuracy to help smooth it out. Because I still mess up a lot. But unlike Photoshop, where you have to then correct each pixel, here I just correct anchor points. I'm going to fill that in with black there and with no stroke. See the smooth kind of saved me there. And I can always redraw it a little bit thinner if I want to. Though I kind of, I might like it thicker, actually. And now I have to do this other leaf. Now if you redraw once a path is selected, but you don't ever connect with that path, it will just draw a new path for you. And if you want to match the format you've used, just use the dropper tool. And I get my fill. Hold down Command. Let's see how that looks. Pretty nice. Pretty elegant. I like zooming out, seeing if it holds up even small. And it does. That's still all recognizable. I don't want to have anything that's too dainty and vital to the overall design. Now I'll do this one. When I have multiple curves going different directions, I like to use the pencil tool instead of the pen tool. But to get perfect control of your curves, instead of creating multiple anchor points, that's when the pen tool is very handy. Okay, so now, almost all done. I don't know if I'll finish it in this demo. But I almost have my black and white logo. Now I just need to take these, these different paths here and rotate them onto the other side. And then I'll think I'll have a very serviceable, serviceable black and white logo for my unique Earth Day design. And I'll just tweak it here and there.